My next guest is back in action February 27th at HR MMA 119. He's going to be taking on Corey Moon. It is Harry Hunsucker joining me here on the program for the very first time. Harry, how's it going, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing awesome. Uh, you're in the car. Where am I getting you? Coming from practice, going to practice. Where am I getting you? Covered in sweat, man. I just uh, was doing <laughs> some conditioning, so I just ran out here to get the interview. So I, 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 I've been out a couple minutes, but you know. Okay, because I was going to say, I know that's a pain in the ass. I know when you do a run or whatever, you're all sweaty and stuff, and, and now you got to talk to me. But I appreciate it, man. Look at the lengths you're going to doing this you know, in the car where it's quiet, right? So, well, I think it, you know, you got, I got to work out in the morning because I, you know, I run for businesses, so um, you got to get the endorphins going so the brain works right. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. The first thing I do when I get up is I go to the gym. I mean, uh, my day is way better when I work out. But anyways, no one wants to hear about my day. We want to hear about you, man. Uh, how did uh, how did this all come together with you fighting for HRMMA, and, and how much notice did you get? Because it seemed like uh, you had a bit of notice for this one. Um, so, I mean, I've been fighting for, uh, for Brandon Higdon, uh, Hard Rock, the matchmaker for HR MMA for, oh man, probably 10, I mean, close to 10 years, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I started fighting for him. I had already had fights, but I fought for him as an amateur on his 40th show and I'm still with him. I was, uh, you know, his amateur heavyweight champion. And then I won the first ever professional heavyweight championship. I just defended it back in October. And then, uh, this will be my second title defense. Um, I've had, you know, I've known about this for a while now, so, um, no short notice this time. I'm ready. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. And, and let's talk about that quickly. I mean, obviously people probably watching this remember you from, from Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. Uh, we talked about the short notice. How was that overall experience? I know you would have liked the win in the contract, but what did you learn the most from that fight? And it's interesting because Vandera is, uh, is there, Vandera is actually uh, fighting, fighting this weekend as well. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah. He's fighting a Spivak. It got, uh, it got moved because of COVID. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember. Yeah. He caught COVID. I forgot. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was a crazy, you know, it was a, it was a crazy whirlwind of events. I fought, you know, about three weeks prior to that contender series fight. And, you know, everybody told me to stay ready. Like they did. They're like, Hey, you're going to get a call. I didn't think it was going to come that quick. So like I took a week and a half or so and I was lazy. You know what I mean? I'm not going to lie. And, you know, I paid for it. Um, you know, the gas tank wasn't there in the Vandera fight and it goes, and it just goes to show that it goes away that quickly. You know what I mean? The gas tank is, um, for a big heavyweight guy goes away quick. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, it was about, you know, it was about three weeks of not the best training. And then, you know, I get the call and I'm like, you don't say no to that. Number of course, one, yeah. and number two, the four days leading up to that. So it was on four days notice and, it was just a whirlwind of events. I find out um, we're flying within 24 hours, get there, can't sleep that night, you know, sleep like three hours. Then I'm up, uh, you know, medicals all day until four o'clock. And then I get to the hotel and I'm like, finally, I can die <laughs> and sleep a little bit. And then they, you know, as soon as I get back to the room, uh, my, my corners are like, no, you got to go to production now. So then we're doing that till like nine, 10 o'clock at night. And, um, you know, I finally got a little bit of sleep that night, but then again, I was up at 4 a.m. because, you know, the time adjustment. Um, so, you know, I didn't sleep the way, that well that night. And then, um, you know, weigh-ins were the next day and we finally got to chill a little bit that day. And then the next day I'm fighting, man. So it was basically, I went from zero to a hundred miles an hour as fast as you possibly can. And, you know, um, you know, the, the, um, the good part about it though, cause like, I'm not mad about that loss at all because I showed up, I cracked old dude's head and, and I came in there and I made a statement and, you know, I think that with, you know, another win, maybe two, I'll be invited, you know, either back to the show or, you know, straight into the UFC because before that I was on a five fight winning streak. And the only time I've lost in the past, I think since 2013, 2014 was, you know, a four day notice fight that I actually showed up pretty well. And then, you know, just the gas tank ran out. It wasn't where I needed to be. And, you know, I paid for it, but I, I showed up for them and I'm hope I'm hoping that, you know, it pays off in the long run. And you're on their radar, right? I mean, that's the biggest thing. And I'm glad you brought all that up about the logistics of it. Cause I don't think people realize that when you take a short notice fight, especially during a pandemic, cause you got to do all the testing and all that other stuff. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a little crazy, right? So yeah, it was it was a wild one, man, because I mean, literally the you know, so we found out about it on Halloween 
And then, you know, we didn't know that it was confirmed at all Mm -hmm. um, until the next day. And then there was a a UFC card on the next day and my name popped up on there. And I never I never even saw it. It was never official. Um, And and then all of a sudden people are like, what what the hell, man? You didn't you know, you didn't say anything to us. Why you're fighting in the (laughs) UFC? And I'm like, well, you know, you can't really say until they, you know, they they give you the go ahead. But then it was official and word got out and. You know, the support here was crazy. How did you end up linking up with Pat Wilson, uh, your, your manager at Rise Management? Uh, I was curious about that because I know Pat. Uh, Pat's Canadian, actually. I've, I've known Pat for a long time. I'm Canadian myself. I got gotcha. you. So um, a couple of different ways. So, like, I was getting to a point in my, in my you know, professional career where I knew I needed to get management. And um, so I started, you know, I got a couple calls of people asking about managing me first. And then I was like, I think that I need to look into this. And um, so I got up with Pat. I got up with a number of other people and I really clicked with Pat. Um, Nathan, you know, Nate Manis, uh, he spoke very highly of Pat. I know, I know Nate, you know, we're both from Kentucky. We're both Kentucky boys. And, um, you know, Nate had a lot of good things to say about Pat. And then the matchmaker for HR MMA, he, uh, Brandon, he's been a good friend of mine for a long time. He also um, highly recommended Pat. And so that didn't sell me immediately. So I hopped on the phone with probably 10 different management groups. And honestly, man, the thing that, that uh, brought me to Pat was he was cool. He was down to earth. And he he was, you know, it's a small group. I don't like, I don't want to be a number Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I do know what you mean. There's a lot of management companies. They rep like just a ton of fighters. And it's like, how do they keep track of everyone? Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I got up with Pat and, you know, it took me about a, two weeks to, to finalize everything just because it was, it was a big decision and I wanted to make sure it was the right move. And, um, you know, for MMA wise, man, it's been the, one of the best moves that I've made. I mean, I fought once and then I was in, you know, fighting for a UFC contract. So he knows his stuff. He's got, you know, his connections. And then he, ta- he takes good care of you too, man. Like anytime I call him, he'll, you know, he answers or he gets back to me immediate, immediately. He checks on me. He's always, you know, checking on my social media. You know, he's just, you know, he's the real deal, man. And I true, you know, I'm truly thankful for Rise. Awesome. Good to hear that. Uh, let's talk about Corey Moon. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Um, you know, Corey Moon's a, a big old bear of a man. He's a big, <laughs> big boy. He's going to outweigh me by a chunk. I'm, you know, I'm, uh, you know, today in the gym, I was 242 and he's going to be, I mean, we already know he's going to be overweight for this title fight. So we're just seeing to where he can get to. And, you know, I'm going to take it regardless. Cause you know, that's what I do. I'm a fighter. And that seems to be the right rise sports management problem. We're always fighting people outside of our weight class. <laughs> right. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about Nate, especially, I know he's had a couple of catch weight fights, right? So, yeah. So, you know, and that normally doesn't happen at heavyweight, but you know, it is what it is, man. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to fight and stay active and, you know, get back on the, on, on the big show. So he's a, you know, he's a big bear of a man. He's, you know, he's a lot bigger than me. He's taller. Um, you know, but I feel like I'm much more experienced in high level fights. Uh, not only because of the contender series fight, but my, you know, ever since I fought Dontel Mays, that was my last loss before the contender series. Um, you know, ever since I fought Dontel, I've fought high profile fights in my state. You know what I mean? And um, I just feel like I'm more experienced, I'm more focused, and, you know, I want it more, you know, and at the end of the day, that's that's what matters the most, man, is I, I'm hungry, you know? Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, training camp, who are some of the, the main bodies you get to work with for this camp? Um, so this training camp's been a little fun, um, you know, because my main gym that I train at is shut down because of COVID. Um, it actually, you know, we're waiting to reopen right now. He's moved to a new facility. There was just some, you know, some stuff that happened. They had to shut down because of, you know, the whole COVID shutdown and the financial side of it. So me and my coach are getting together. Michael Seals, that's my MMA coach. That's my jujitsu coach. I'm a brown belt under him. Um, Jamal Mohammed, he's one of my training partners. Uh, my, my main training partner, Trent Knott, uh, that was another, uh, you know, kind of, bone thrown in the game as he was in a pretty serious car accident and broke his neck. Um, 
So, you know, I lost one of my main training partners, but we've got a really cool thing going on uh, here in Kentucky. It's called the Kentucky Fighters Group. It's a bunch of guys trying to just get some cross training in and get to the awesome. next level and help each other out. And that's been a saving grace for me. Um, and then my gym, Elite Martial Arts, that's where I get, you know, a lot of my work in as well. Good stuff. Uh, do you have to cut any weight? I guess not. I mean, you're 240, right? So it's not like you have to. I'm sure you diet a bit, though, but... I normally walk around between 260 and 265. Oh, okay, gotcha. But I I get tunnel vision, man, and, like, I get, like, pretty focused whenever it's time to fight. So, like, I'm training two times a day. Um, you know, I, I quit drinking completely. Good for um, you. How long's that you been? Know, uh, I quit on New Year's Eve, and my goal is to not have a dr- drop to drink until I'm back in the in the UFC, man. Um, Love not it. a drop. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, I got tunnel vision right now, man. And like, you know, there's been injuries and, you know, your mental game suffers a little bit, you know what I mean? After coming out of a big fight like that. Um, so, you know, I had to dig deep and, and, um, get my head right, man. And like, I'm in a really good place now and I know why I'm here. And that's something that, you know, people see me use that hashtag all the time. I know why I'm here. And, um, you know, you know, sometimes I, I, I let that slip away from me, but now I got it back and it ain't going nowhere. How's this fight playing out in February 27th? Um, I'm going to win. You know what I mean? I'm that's I'm I'm going to I'm going to bust my butt to win. And, you know, we're we're trying to get some cage experience this time, if I'm being honest, you know, because I've you know, every fight I've been in it has ended in the first round. So I'm just going to, you know, try to push for you know second third fourth round honestly and i've never said that before it's just if i'm gonna get back to the next level and i'm gonna compete on the big shows we gotta we gotta get some ring ring time in you know what i mean and i've done millions and millions of sparring rounds but it's different you got to get that in cage experience and you know i've been in a lot of fights i've been in 20 something fights now but there's a big difference in getting that 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 cage time in you know yeah, no, I love it. That sounds great. Um, and, and I imagine in terms of what's next after this, not looking past February 27th, but just keep fighting for your promotion, keep defending that title. And then, you know, if the call comes, it comes, right? I mean, I'm sure the thing is just, you know, keep active, right? Yeah, yeah, I know that I got, I just got to keep winning. You know yeah. what I mean? Just, and just win, just win. That's all in the back of my, that's all that's in the back of my head right now is just, just win, just win, just win. And, you know, make the right decisions. You know, that was one of the, that was one of the things that got me November 4th on the contender series. I hadn't been making the right decisions and I'd just been, you know, fighting fights. Now this, everything is a fight that I'm doing. You know what I mean? Every single thing that I'm doing, whether I'm in a camp or not, has to be focused. It has to be intentional and I have to quit playing around, you know, and not that it, like I'm, I'm not at, acting like I'm like immediately after a camp, like I'm down, you know what I mean? Because I'm always in the gym, but you know, there's just certain choices that we make that, you know, we pay for if, if a short notice fight comes up and I'm not making those mistakes again. Tell me about your businesses. I'm curious about this. You said you run four businesses. How is it managing all that with, with training and and everything else? I, um, I don't own the businesses myself. I, I'm the general manager of four martial arts schools. Um, elite martial arts we run summer camp and after school programs um in the kentucky area we've got four schools here and then we teach martial arts as well for uh anybody from three up to my oldest student is probably 65 and you know it's cool man you know there's a there's a lot that people don't know they think that you just you know you get to live the time of your life and and teach karate all the time, teach martial arts all the time. But, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of gray hairs, especially with, you know, the gym shutdowns that we faced and everything this year. Um, you know, it's been an interesting year and, um, you know, we've, we've, uh, you know, we've blossomed and we've made it through it and we've done pretty well, but, you know, it's just, it's, it's crazy, man, being a, uh, you know, helping run businesses, man. It's a, it's a wild ride, no matter what business you're in. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And good to see it's in martial arts as well. It's not like something completely different, right? So at least you're kind of always in MMA, right? No matter what. So yeah, absolutely. Speaking of which, don't want to keep you too long, Harry. Really appreciate the time, man. It's HR MMA 119 coming up here February 27th. Anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media? I'll give you the last word. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's see. You know, number one, I got to thank Pat, my manager at Rise Sports Management. I want to thank um, my, my, my two places I 
three places I train at. Number one, um, Elite Martial Arts, the gym that, that I work and train at. Uh, Mike Seals Jiu-Jitsu at Lexington Jiu-Jitsu and Fitness. And then Adam Gomez at Georgetown MMA for run, you know letting us run the Kentucky Fighters group out of there. My boy Trent. Um, and then all my sponsors, guys, uh, Planet Pawn um omni construction those are the bit you know my big two and all the rest of my sponsors guys i really appreciate you guys um and then everybody who supports me man you know this is a um a game that can break you if you don't have the right people behind you and you know i have a a huge 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 group of supporters around here that i'm super thankful for and then uh, my wife my kids i love you guys 